Howdy folks, this is Shane. We're here to take a look at two guitars from the Tokai range. This is a left-handed love rock guitar. This is one of the ones made in China. It's an absolutely beautiful guitar to look at. It sounds really cool. It has two PAF style pickups, four controls, and everything you would expect on a regular Les Paul style guitar. It's got a bit of weight behind it, and we're gonna compare it today to this one. This is my latest one. This is the made in Japan Tokai, so this is like their top of the line. This would be the equivalent of custom shop style guitars from Gibson. I actually own a custom shop Les Paul, so I have a basis for comparison, and this ticks all the boxes in comparison to that. So this is a beautiful guitar based on a 59, actually. I thought this was a 58, and someone mentioned that this color, this particular color, didn't start until 59, so maybe it's based on a 59. Either way, it's got a big neck, same controls, patch style pickups. We're gonna see how they sound in comparison to each other, I'm also going to talk about how they feel to play as well as what you can expect to hear from them. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Neck pickup on the Chinese Tokai. Swapping between both of these guitars, I noticed two differences straight away. The Japanese Tokai is a whole lot brighter and it has a whole lot more output. Now, the whole brightness thing is subjective to what kind of tones you like. This is just neck pickup so far, and what I've noticed is this one here sounds a little bit darker and a little bit more moody, whereas this one, the Japanese one, has just that chime on the top. So, so let's take another listen now. One thing I've noticed, and as you can probably hear, the Japanese Tokai, especially on the neck pickup right now, has a lot more note definition from, say, the G to the low E. So going this way up the guitar, this particular model just has more clarity on the notes. The other one gets a little woolly in overtone, but let me know your thoughts on that as well. Let's try Dead Clean now on both pickups. <laughs> So the same thing is evident, this particular guitar sounds about 20% quieter, give or take, than the Japanese one. It also sounds a little bit darker sounding as well, which is expected 
We're on both pickups, so the neck pickup is still in combination with the bridge. So over to bridge, let's give this a shot on its own now. If you're playing at home, you're absolutely right. I was in E and then I played a lick in A. Why? I'm not too sure. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's see how we go getting a money for nothing style sound. What I've done, I've just cocked the wah slightly in the middle. I've got my clon on, and I've got the left side of the versus audio pedal on. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. This is both pickups on the guitar with the neck pickup just down here. Let's have a talk now about how these guitars feel to play and the differences just from a feel perspective. So in terms of weight, they feel, they feel about the same. I haven't weighed these, but just doing a quick test, I wouldn't say one's heavier than the other. I'd say they're pretty much exactly the same. They do weigh a little bit, but they're not quite as heavy as my gold top from Gibson. So that's a good thing as well. Sometimes people don't like really heavy Les Pauls. These aren't really heavy Les Pauls, they're just heavy Les Pauls. <laughs> this particular guitar, the Japanese one, has a 50 style neck. So it has a nice fat round neck on the back, reminiscent of the way Gibson used to make their necks in the 50s. It's beautiful in terms of looks. The top is really cool. I made mention on my demo of this guitar that I wasn't a huge fan of this sort of traditional color. I actually like the finish a little bit better on this. I shouldn't say I like the finish better, but I actually like the color of this one a little bit more than this one. That said, this one is actually growing on me. And what can I say? The frets feel really nice to play. They're basically the same frets that are on my Gibson Custom Shop 56 reissue. Same size, the binding's beautiful. It's flawless in terms of appearance. What can I say? It's a one piece neck from what I can tell. I think the headstock's joined up there, but I mean, in terms of just the neck, one piece. The body looks like it is two piece. I could be wrong. It could be one piece, actually. It could be a one piece body. I'm not 100% certain about the specs, but I can't see any lines down it. I thought this was a line here, but it isn't. It stops there. So it could be a one piece body as well. And it's got just a beautiful finish on the top. The pickups are true vintage style PAF pickups. And yeah, it's an absolute animal. So let's have a talk about how this one feels to play. Over to the Chinese Tokai now, and this is an absolute pleasure to play. It feels really, really good in the hand. The huge difference between this and that guitar in terms of feel is the neck. Everything else about this guitar feels fine to play. One other thing that's actually different about these guitars from each other is the way that the volume controls work. So. This Chinese Tokai, the volume controls to roll on go forward, which is how it is for right hand. As you roll it forward, it turns on. Now, with lefties, lefties are weird beasts, man, when they come out of the factory. Fender make their guitars the proper way. They put all their controls going forwards. Gibson wire their lefties for right-handers, basically. So it's the same wiring, so on is backwards. Now, I'm so used to that with these style guitars that when I play this Chinese Tokai, 
I always have to think about it before I play that volumes forward on this, which is, you know, the way it should be for all guitars, but um, my 335 from Toko rolls the other way, so on is down, and that's fine. I'm so used to that guitar, I don't think twice about it. It's just one of those things I got used to. Now, after the uh, getting used to playing the Chinese one for the last year, and then getting the Japanese one, these roll backwards as well, which is kind of what I prefer when I play a Les Paul or 335. Now, I'm just so used to it that way, I would have trouble with it going the, you know, the other way, uh, just in general. Although, like I said, I've been playing the Chinese one for a while, so that guitar's in my head as rolling forwards, but I still have to make a conscious sort of thought process about it when I'm using it live, otherwise I can just turn it off by accident. They're both great guitars to play, they do feel very different. Let's put price into perspective, I know it's going to be different in all the other countries around the world other than Australia, but let's just have a talk about that. This particular Japanese Tokai retails for about $2,200 here, I paid just under $1,800. It also comes in a Tokai hard case, which is phenomenal. It's got that sort of paisley thing going on about it as well. The Chinese one came in around $650 or $600, somewhere around there. I actually bought this and the SG and I got them both for around $1,150 on the same day. So I thought that was, you know, what a great deal. If you're wondering if I prefer this or an Epiphone guitar, there's some great Epiphones out there. I've owned many Epiphones over the years. I would put this up with some of the best ones that I've owned, there's no doubt about it. I would also put this ahead of my Gibson Studio Les Paul. I had two of those at one point. Playability wise, this feels a whole lot better. The frets don't have any problems, no buzz, no dead notes, no choking out. The nut was fine, I haven't had to mod this in any way other than replacing the bridge. This is a Tone Pros bridge, and the reason I swapped that out was because the stock one buzzed when it was playing like acoustic. If I hit the G string, you'd hear this buzz that I just couldn't get rid of other than changing the bridge. So for an extra 80 bucks thereabouts, I had one delivered from the US and I replaced it, and the Tone Pro stuff is fantastic. In terms of mods for this one, what do I plan on doing to it? Absolutely nothing. It's perfect the way it is. All I had to do was raise up the bridge to get the action a little higher on the high strings and that was it so yeah it's an absolute beast i've tried different pickups in this which also made a difference to the sound but now it's back to stock and well minus the bridge it's back to stock and it's still a really nice guitar for the price if you're a beginner or intermediate or if you're doing some recording at home and you want a les paul tone but you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a gibson or whatever this or an epiphone it might be a little bit out of your range too definitely check out the Tokai stuff. I can highly vouch for these guys. They make great stuff and the quality control is awesome. If you are looking for something custom shop quality that will absolutely wipe the floor with the majority of the standard Les Pauls out there, check these guys out, man. Awesome stuff. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions about these guitars or the video, please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let me know what you think of the tones of each as well, which one you preferred and why. If you only have one of these guitars, you're not gonna really know the difference in the tone. That's why I thought this video was important for those on the fence about either getting a Chinese one or a Japanese one. It's up to you which one you like the best. Some people like a darker tone than others. Some people like a brighter tone. For me, personally, I like a brighter tone with humbuggers. It's a lot easier to dial some of the brightness out if you do need to than trying to dial it in. The note definition is definitely there, in my opinion, on the Japanese guitar. And this particular guitar, Chinese one, sounds really, really smooth. So, you know, it's all personal choice. I've used this on my last album to record some slow blues parts, and it was awesome. I can't wait to use this on my next album. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.